Um, good morning, and Gus, thank you very much for that positive um, sort of roundup of evaluation because people don't always feel very positive about it, really. So, my name's Esther Gill. Um, I've been commissioned by MOLA to evaluate the Citizen Project. Um, as part of, of their HLF funding requirements, but hopefully not just doing it simply because the HLF says you need to, that actually it's a process that allows an organisation like MOLA and a project like Citizen to um, review what they're doing, to look at how they can improve and develop what they're doing, and I think feed into the next phase, hopefully, of the, the Citizen project. Um, so this morning I've been asked to talk about did they enjoy it, volunteer responses to Citizen, um, and I just, just quickly to say, I'm very pleased to be talking on the subject of did they enjoy it. Quite often as an evaluator, you're asked to talk about have they learnt new skills, um, have they built their confidence, has their social capital developed? Well, actually, none of that happens unless somebody has a good time. And the root of it is enjoyment. You don't come back to something unless you get some pleasure, some enjoyment out of it. So, yeah, my topic this morning is citizen and enjoyment. And I th thought I'd start with just kind of reminding ourselves about why I'm talking about volunteering. You know, this is an archaeology project. We've heard some fascinating talks, both yesterday and today, about the archaeology. But why am I here talking about volunteers and volunteering? Well, this, um, this quote here comes from the application to the Heritage Lottery Fund. What will your project do? Citizen will create an infrastructure and network of volunteers with a skills commitment and a modus operandi to record, monitor and promote the significant, fragile and threatened archaeological sites around England's coast and on the foreshores of our tidal estuaries. So right from the start, Citizen has been about um, archaeology, coastal and tidal archaeology, and about volunteering. It's an archaeology project, but it's also a volunteering project. And actually, as we report back to the HLF, we have to be reporting on both of those areas. Citizen doesn't work without um, a developing team of engaged, active, enthusiastic volunteers. And we heard from three amazing volunteers this morning, and I think um, their presentations just in a way summed up about when Citizen is really working well and when the project is doing what it was kind of set up to do. Um, so that's why, that's why I'm talking about people, that's why I'm talking about volunteers. And who are these volunteers? Um, I asked Stephanie a few weeks back just to whether there was a standard definition of who a volunteer was with Citizen and what the numbers were. She took a while to come back to me and said she'd gone down a rabbit hole here because actually the more you try and unpick this, who is a Citizen volunteer? Citizen um, engages with thousands of people and has engaged with thousands of people across those three years. So, I mean, slightly, slightly differing figures from yours, I think, Stephanie, but basically um, I reckon there's around 9,000 plus people who've, been, who've engaged with Citizen through the wide variety of talks, events, conferences, presentations, dog walks, young archaeological club events, talks and workshops with guides and brownies, you know, you name it, Citizen has done it to talk about um, the work and really expand that knowledge around coastal and intertidal archaeology. They've also got their app and there are now 1,900 registered users of the app. Are those people all volunteers? I think, and I think the definition that we're working with is that the volunteers are, um, are a subset of all of what I call those potential volunteers. They're people who've attended the training events. They are the people who are using the app, who are uploading photos, up uploading monitoring information. Um, some of those people who've attended a training event may have attended one training event and may not so far have done much more. But tomorrow, who knows? They may be out walking their dogs, they may be on the coastal path, 
Storm Brian has thrown something up and suddenly they're out there with their app, they're on the phone to Stephanie or Lara, or so. they're actually remembering back to the training they had and the moment has come for them to step up into that sort of volunteering role. So there's, there's what I've called the super volunteers. Those, the three people who spoke this morning are certainly super volunteers, but in a way probably super volunteers is the wrong name. I should call them our very active volunteers. All of the volunteers bring something different to the project and all of the volunteers, whether they are coming out regularly, uploading lots of records and photographs, or whether they're mulling over the training that they've had and thinking about what they might do, they're all part of that citizen team of volunteers um, and they're all part of the, I suppose, the future, the future team for monitoring that sort of coastal and intertidal area. Volunteers come from all walks of life, um, all ages. I've, I've come across some young lads. Um, I've, come, I've worked with some, or spoken recently actually, to some older volunteers who no longer feel able to come down onto the foreshore, um, but who are doing some sort of behind the scenes work and working on records. So volunteers come from all walks of life, all around the, the coastline of England, um, all ages. One thing that unites them um, is that there's something about Citizen that has captured their interest, um, that's caught their eye and has got them involved in some way. So I've, um, I've been looking at all of the evaluation data that comes from the forms that have just been handed out. And I know those forms are tedious to fill in. I have to say, confess, I didn't fill in one yesterday for the TDP, so I will, I will do that now. Those forms sometimes feel tedious and a bit repetitive to complete, but they are really useful for getting a picture of how people have experienced and been involved with the project over three years. We can't talk to those 9,000 plus people. I can't even talk to the 583 people who are really active, you know, who are more active volunteers. So the information from those forms is really useful. So I've been talking to volunteers, I've been going through those forms and trying to pull out some themes around what people enjoy from Citizen. So the first theme I've pulled out is that it is social and active volunteering. Um, you rarely go out on a citizen project and it's just you. You meet other people who, um, who have similar interests to yourselves, maybe from a similar area. Um, this quote here was from somebody who had come out in a trading event. I enjoyed meeting other people with similar interests in archaeology. Now, a lot of people in their day-to-day -day life, they don't necessarily work alongside people with similar interests. Citizen gives them an opportunity to be outdoors, to be social, to engage in very active volunteering. The two women whose backs you can see um, in this picture, this picture's from Brown Sea Island, by the way, and you'll be hearing more about Brown, Brown Sea Island later. They were friends, and they'd been looking for something to do, and they came down to Brown Sea Island, um, or for, to Pool, for the weekend came along on this project. What most impressed me was after um, we were recording a brick kiln here, after this we went for a guided walk around the island and had our lunch. They got out the most spectacular picnic. They had some wine glasses, they had wine. They, this was a really social occasion. But after that, they got back on the job and carried on. So it was a very social event. My second theme um, that I've pulled out is that this is volunteering, that it's not only on the doorstep, but it is about, about your doorstep. For some people, um, where they are lucky enough to have a sort of citizen site very close to them, volunteering is on their doorstep. And somebody used that phrase to me this morning. This picture here is from, oh, it's falling off the bottom, sorry. It's from Hesham in Lancashire, which we heard about from Andy this morning. Um, I went up to Hesham in 2015, so one of the first times that Citizen was going out um, on that site. And then Andy was talking about work that was happening in 2016 and 2017. 
what I was really struck by with the people I met in Hesham was that they were people with a lot of local expertise about the church, about the rectory woods that we walked through, um, about the um, cliff tops and St Patrick's Chapel that again you saw some pictures of earlier. And that was local expertise built up over years of um, working in that area, researching that area. And I feel for volunteering, as for people who are able to volunteer on their doorstep to learn more about an area that maybe they already know a lot about the history of the church, but Citizen comes along and offers them the opportunity to learn a lot more about other areas um, of the history of that area. So it's a bit like a kind of 360 degree analysis and now sort of adding in the archaeology. So the fact that for some people in some areas, Citizen is on their doorstep, doorstep um, it's a huge benefit, it's a huge motivator to becoming involved, and it's where I would say Citizen works best. Um, Mersey Island is another one where, where that's happened, and I think it's something that will be in a new model um, with Citizen 2 or HLF 3, if that's successful, the greater focus on specific areas and building local discovery programmes will enable more of this to happen. This is Berlin Gap in East Sussex. Now, I think Stephanie used this quote from a volunteer earlier, which is lovely. I feel like I'm contributing something of value to a project that is important. This particularly came out when I was interviewing people <coughs> around their experience of using the app. And I think the volunteers that I was interviewing around the app, um, well, they fell into two camps. There were the people who were struggling to use the app, and we talked a lot about some of the struggles that I, you know, people will have had in starting to use the app. And then there are the people who've used the app hugely. And one of the things that the app has allowed people to do is really see that direct line between their, the, their volunteering work they're doing going into a national database that is going to be used permanently into the future. And that feeling that this volunteering is real, it's authentic. People are going to be using the recording, the monitoring, the data that they're putting up via the app or through training events that they're happening. Um, this is a project that people feel is really making a difference. And somebody said to me, um, that it's really nice to know that their work is going onto the historical record. Well, what a great feeling to feel that, again, this might not be something that you do in your daily life, your, your professional life, your working life might be very different, but you volunteer with Citizen and you can know that your work is actually having a permanent benefit going into the national record. Now, a small subset of the volunteers I've spoken to are people who are um, either coming back into archaeology after a break and see Citizen as a, a way of building up their skills again, building up their confidence and potentially going back into a professional career, um, or people who are starting out. So this young man here, Theo, I met Theo up in Hull this year. Um, Theo is doing, um, I think it must be the last cohort doing an archaeology A-level and is looking to do archaeology um, at university. For Theo, the great thing about Citizen is that he can come along, this was a one-day workshop, come along for a one-day workshop, he got his skills passport, he can start to complete parts of that. He may or may not come again, but for him it was an opportunity, it was, it was a low-risk opportunity to build some skills up through a project. He didn't have to commit to two weeks solid digging, it was, he could come along on one day, and this particular workshop was specifically aimed at people within his age range. Because having said that Citizen does attract people across you know, the broad spectrum, it's still fair to say that a lot of people are my age and above. If you're an 18 year old, it might be quite nice to come along to a project where you feel there's gonna be maybe other young people involved. Yes, and the quote up here, it's really good to get back into archeology span again, was somebody who had been doing more archeology span who'd lost some of their confidence in that. And this is a way of rebuilding their skills and using Citizen um, yeah, as a vehicle for that. And then, of course, discovery. 
finding treasure, the excitement of finding something new, whether that's a tangible object, um, whether that is a piece of information that links different sites, um, whether that is simply seeing something that hasn't been seen by other people for you know hundreds of years. Um, professional archaeologists, you know, they're um, you may experience this in your daily lives. Um, there may be sometimes some sniffiness around the discovery side, but goodness, if you're a volunteer and you get to discover something, that's just bloody brilliant. <laughs> this, the quote here, um, sadly I don't have a picture to go with this, the quote was, the thing I enjoyed most was finding the crazy bottle. Well, I'll allow you to imagine what that crazy bottle might be, but for that volunteer on their day out of Sitsan, they found a crazy bottle. That's something they're going to remember, and hopefully they've got a photo of the crazy bottle. The photo I have got is from Mersey Island in Essex. I've been told I've only got five minutes left. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so this, uh, this photograph is from Mersey Island in Essex. This is a piece of the pottery um, that Lawrence was talking about earlier. It might possibly be the piece that you had a photograph of, Lawrence. I'm not sure. It's not, okay. Yes, this in my mind is, is Claudia's pot. Now, Claudia came along with her partner. Her partner is a mudlark. I don't think she had done a huge amount of archaeology before this, but the great thing was that she found it. Um, the great thing for me was that I found some stuff too. It just didn't look quite as nice as this, so I thought I'd put her photograph in. Um, yeah, you can't beat going out, volunteering, and finding finding treasure, whatever that treasure may be. Um, underpinning all of this um, is what I call the citizen ethos. It's a really positive volunteering culture um, that is around welcoming people, being really inclusive, having a focus on fun, ending up in the pub. I've ended up in the pub quite a few times with citizen. Um, and I think this quote, in a way, sums it up. This was from a training event. The delivery was excellent, relaxed, and crucially, let us think we could all do it. And I think that's one of the key things around Citizen. There is an emphasis that actually this is for everybody to get involved in and find their way through the Citizen process. And without that ethos, it's not enough simply to run a training event that ethos has to underpin it to make people feel welcomed, included, part of the team. It's a very strong team ethos with um, Citizen, and that is also critical. I know I'm running out of time, so I'm going to just skip over these very quickly, and also they haven't displayed very well. Um, just very quickly, it's not all roses in the garden. There are some challenges um, that volunteers and potential volunteers face, and if Citizen and the next phase of Citizen and partner organisations are to build a team of reliable, um, sustainable volunteering, some of these have to be addressed in some ways. So there's some practical issues. You know, it's not everybody can easily get onto the foreshore. And on some of the sites I've been to, the foreshore is a lot further away from public roads and spaces than it is here along the Thames. Um, I don't have reliable childcare. Okay, well, Citizen's not going to be offering a crash anytime soon, but I did recently have what, come across what was effectively family volunteering. Parents and their son, maybe 11 or 12, volunteering together. Well, that's just quite a nice adaptation that has the potential to be explored. Um, transport is a big one. I was really struck yesterday with the TDP. I would bet that every TDP site is within even half a mile, if not closer, of good, reliable public transport. Well, that certainly can't be said of all the citizen sites. Um, and then the other area, I'm sorry it's displayed so badly, um, volun managing, supporting, training volunteers uh, takes, a, takes significant time, significant input, and that shouldn't be underestimated. Volunteers need, and right, rightfully need and want, um, more training. They want to have an initial training course, and some volunteers then need two, three, four, maybe other training courses to build up confidence, expertise, to make sure that they feel 
that they are doing it right and giving something back useful. So when asking volunteers about if there's things that they would like, um, I've got two quotes here, um, I need to practice with the app and then refresher training would be good. More on-site practice would be good. What you hear is more, 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 but that obviously takes um, you know, it's, there's only a limited team here, there's a limited training that can be done. So, um, yeah, there, in terms of building sustainable volunteering, um, that does take quite a lot of input from the team. So, did they enjoy it? Back to that original question. Overwhelmingly, yes. People who come out on site, who do a, a training course, come out with one of the projects we've heard about this morning. People enjoy Citizen, they enjoy the, um, the ethos, the culture, they enjoy getting involved, they do enjoy being outdoors, they enjoy doing new things, they enjoy using skills they've got, transferring skills and developing new skills. Um, as I said, there are things that can be developed in the second stage of Citizen that will just help to embed that and also support more people going along that continuum from an initial outreach event to maybe a second outreach event to doing a training event to uploading the app to begin to put photos on the app and becoming one of those sort of super volunteers that we heard about this morning. So thank you very much for listening. Um, Anybody in the audience who wants to come and talk to me the rest of today, I'm here all day, very, you know, very interested to hear about people's experiences and people's thoughts about Citizen as a project. Thank you. Thank you.